In this video we're going to be having a look at Pro Tools plugin settings and how to save and recall them. So we'll take a look at an example of a simple plugin which is one that everybody has, the Avid 7 band EQ. Okay, and I'm just I've put it on a track which I think has the sound effect of a siren on it. Okay. Usually when you first instantiate a plugin the settings will be flat. But you can choose from a variety of presets which are installed with the system by going to the librarian menu and you can see we have a variety of suggested settings you know for various different purposes. So it's easy enough just to click on the menu. We have subcategories and you can click on any of them and it will just open that particular preset. But at some point, you're probably going to want to save your own plugin settings. So let's say that I made my own. Let's just do some settings here. And if I was happy with that as a setting, I could go to the settings menu, which is this little triangle icon at the top. Click on that. Save settings as. And the default location will actually be a folder for that specific plugin. If you're on a Mac, this is going to be under Users, Username, Documents, Pro Tools, Plugin Settings, and on Windows, it's System Drive, Users, Username, Documents, Pro Tools, Plugin Settings. But you can, of course, choose to put it anywhere potentially. In this case, it makes sense just to keep it in that uh, folder. A lot of plugins have pre made um, subfolders, as this one does. So if I go here, I've actually previously made one called Paul Settings. Double click on this, and uh, I'll just call this Cut Mud 2. Save that. And now, wherever I have this plugin, so if I put this onto another track here, I can go to the librarian menu, into the subfolder, and just recall that setting. The location where I save that is actually called the root settings folder. If I go back to the settings menu, under settings preferences, we can choose the default here. Under save plugin settings 2, it's currently set to root settings folder, but you can see we can also change it to session folder. The root settings folder is probably what you're going to use most of the time, and it's great for any plugin settings which you want to be available system wide in any session on that system. However, you may on occasions choose to save things to the session folder, and I can show you an example of that in this session. So let me just play you a short bit of this. This is actually a project which I mixed recently and you can find this on the Ampisound YouTube channel. I'll put a link in the description, it's worth having a look. Let me just play this section of dialogue which has a radio effect on it. Z squad, we have company. I'm counting 10 hostiles from the enemy alliance moving on the site right now. You need to pull the research data quickly and get the hell out of there. We are outnumbered. Okay, so that has two plugins on it. Firstly, let me get rid of them both, and you can hear that it started out just a dry dialogue recording. Z Squad, we have company. First thing I did was put this pitch plugin onto it, just to pitch it down very slightly. Z Squad, we have company. And secondly, I added this Mac DSP Footsbox plugin to make it sound uh, like a radio. Z Squad, we have company. And in this particular session, I actually used this setting several times. And also I knew that I was going to be moving this session from one system to another. So I started working on it at home and then I moved it to another system elsewhere, worked on it there for a while, brought it back home and I was going back and forth between these two locations. And because I knew that I was going to use this particular setting several times, rather than saving it to the root settings folder, it just made it a lot easier to save it to the session settings folder. And if you click here, settings preferences, save plugin settings to you can change it to the session folder. So if I just create a different setting. Let's just hear it on its own. Z squad, we have company. I'm counting 10 hostiles. Okay, let's say we're happy with that. Now that that is set as the default location, I can go back to the menu, save settings as. Um, it's a bit more tinny this, so I'll just call it walkie talkie tinny. And uh, if I put that plugin on any other track, you can see that as well as the presets folder, we also have the session settings folder and there's the preset and it's easily recallable. Let's just take a look at this in the actual session folder itself. So there's the plugin settings folder and it's broken down by plugin. So there's a folder for every plugin which you've saved a setting for. So I've got one for filter bank and I've got two for this footsbox one and there's the one which I've just saved. So this just means that the plugin presets will travel with the session wherever it goes. On occasions you might have some plugin settings which you just want to not save but copy from one plugin to another and that's really easy to do. So if I just had a, an EQ setting here 
and I had another copy of the EQ on a different track. Incidentally, if you want to flatten the EQ, the easiest way is probably just to recall the factory default, which is generally completely flat settings. So in this plugin, I can go to the settings menu, choose copy settings, or there is a shortcut, which is shift command C, go to the one which I want to paste it to, click on the same menu, choose paste settings, and there you can see it's recalled those plugin settings. At some point you're probably going to want to delete some plugin settings. So if we just go back to this Footsbox plugin, and if I recall, say this walkie talkie tinny preset, if I decide I no longer want that, I can just go to the settings menu and choose delete current settings file. It'll prompt me asking if I want to do it, click delete, and then you'll see it's no longer in the list. That's true whether you've saved it into the session settings folder or into the system settings folder. Next we'll talk about saving a setting as a user default. So let's take a look at the dialogue at the start of this project. It's going to run a little bit of this. This is the location. We need to pull the data logs off the mainframe in sector B. Okay, so at the moment we have a plugin on that which is the Oxford EQ. Um, I've taken out some of the low end and boosted some of the top because I think the actor was wearing uh, the microphone underneath his, his clothing and so it was a little bit muffled. Let's just replace that for a second. So I'm just going to put on a high pass filter. So I use this quite regularly and quite often I'll click on the plugin, you know, I'll have to manually put the settings in which is fine but it's a little bit of an inconvenience and if you're using a plugin for the same purpose on a regular basis and you're frequently recalling or creating manually the same settings you might want to save that as a preset and then set it as a user default so we'll do that um, maybe I'll do this on the system or the root settings folder so if I change it to that save settings as and go to pull settings maybe I'll just call this Pull high pass. Okay, it already exists, so I'll replace it. And now what I can do is go back to the menu and choose set as user default. And I have to just do one more thing here: settings preferences, set plugin default to, and I can change it from factory setting to user setting. And because I've specified this as my user setting, whenever I put this plugin on another track, as you'll see here, so if I just choose that same one, it's defaulted to those settings. So it's really handy in cases such as this where you frequently want the same starting point. Next we're going to take a look at a function in the Avid Space Reverb plugin called Snapshot. And this is something which um, somebody actually asked about on a previous video. So Mandel24680 asked, um, can you in your next video show us how you're using the Avid Space Snapshot function? I personally don't use the Avid Space plugin very often, although this particular function is quite useful, so we'll take a look at it. Um, we're just going to use the same project again. Uh, if I just create a quick send from maybe the first three tracks here, all of which have some form of dialogue on them, and then maybe I'll create uh, an auxiliary, and I'm just going to put the reverb on it. So it's space. Okay. Now this is a convolution reverb plugin, so it relies on impulse responses to actually generate the reverbs. And uh, because I don't use it all too often, I don't have that many of them installed, but I have enough. Now in this part of the plugin, we can actually load impulse responses into any of these 10 snapshot areas. So let's load all of them up. Let's say for example, we've got snapshot one selected. We can, from this presets list, load uh, a setting, and then I can choose another snapshot, number two, choose a different one, load that in, and I'm just loading them by double clicking them. Uh, let's load something into three, maybe that one, and I'll just load the first five I think. Choose another one here, and then number five. So you can load potentially up to ten. Let's try that one. Okay, and if you really want to you can give them more descriptive names than just snapshot one to five. So I can just double click here. I'm just going to give it a quick name, so I'll call that one Church. And then this is called Church Chicago, so give it that name. And let's call it Big Room. 
I think I might actually change this one to a small room. So we'll click on this, snapshot four, um, find a small room such as this one. Okay, and then I'll just call this small room. Uh, and this one, we'll call it room wide. Okay, so now we've got five snapshots actually loaded into the plugin. In order to get this to work as it's intended to work, we need to actually enable those for automation. There's more than one way of doing that, but I'll just show you the quickest way, or an easy way. So it's to go to the automation enable window here, and you can see all the attributes of the plugin which could potentially be auto-enabled. And at the bottom we've got snapshot. I could auto-enable everything, but I probably don't need them, so I'm just going to do this one. Click add, and then OK. And now, if we go to the track automation lane, we can see that we have the space plugin and there are snapshots. So what you'll see if I recall these snapshots, and you do that just by clicking in the select area for any given snapshot, you can see that that line jumps. So the line represents which of these I've got selected. Let me show you how I could automate this. In fact, I'll just show you how it sounds initially with this quite ridiculous sounding church reverb on this section of dialogue. This is the location. We need to pull the data logs off the mainframe in sector B. Okay, so obviously that's totally unsuitable for this project, but you know, we'll go with it for now. And if I wanted to choose a different reverb for this part, one way which I could automate it would be to make a selection. Say I wanted it to en encompass that section of dialogue. And now with the smart tool, when you hover in the top part of a selection, as in you're in the top quarter or so, it'll become uh, the trim tool. And now I can drag up and you can see I can skip through all of those presets which I've actually got saved. So I'm just going to choose uh, that second church. In fact, I'll choose something which sounds notably different, actually, small room. Now what we'll do is move on to this next section. Say that here I wanted uh, a different one. So again, with the trim tool, either with the, from the smart tool or just the trim tool itself, I'll choose big room three. And then maybe for this section here, I want something different again. So I'll choose, yeah, room wide five. Now, what you'll see when I play it, and hopefully here as well, is that it will selectively recall those different snapshots based on the automation which I've just created. Here we go. This is the location. We need to pull the data logs off the mainframe in sector B. What does this suggest? Only take the shot if you have to. Okay, let's go! Come in, Charlie. Are you receiving? Okay, so that works. And, uh, you know, it's a useful function to have, especially where you don't want to create multiple instances of a plugin and keep creating several different sends to those reverbs. But one slight inconvenience with the way I've done it here is, can you see that we've got these jumps where it goes from that one, and I really wanted it to jump straight to, you know, big room three, but because of the way I automated it, we've got these temporary shifts. If I try and just do this all to one, see the automation is kind of causing a problem. So let me show you an alternative way of doing this, which is particularly handy if you're on Pro Tools HD. What we'll do is make a selection, and in this case that's actually fine. We want that to be the church sound. This is where we're going to use edit automation and write to current. So as I said, this is only on the HD software, but it is very handy. And what write to current will do is whatever's currently shown on the track, in this case the reverb snapshot, it will write breakpoints at the start and end of that selection, and it will write it to whatever the currently selected attribute is. Let me demonstrate that with this next section. That might not have been very apparent, so what we'll do is select this bit. And what I'm going to do is recall big room three. Now, as you can see, the automation lane hasn't changed yet. And if I actually play this, it will revert back from that. See, because it's following the automation on the track. So we select it. And then before I play it, I'm going to do edit automation, 
right to current or command forward slash and it will write it across that selection and then we don't have those sporadic jumps which we had before I'll do that one more time so select over this range here maybe that's where I want the small room sound select it and I'll do the shortcut command forward slash and it's written it across that range at whatever the currently selected setting was now when I run it it will jump between those settings in a bit more of a clean way this is the location we need to pull the data logs off the mainframe in sector B what is the scarce? only take a shot if you have to okay let's go so that ability to selectively save settings in a snapshot and then recall them selectively with automation is a really handy feature of the Avid Space plugin. Finally, we're going to talk about the next and previous settings buttons and also plugin auto increment. I'll just show you this little section where we've got some gunfire indoors. So I've soloed these guns and there's a little bit of reverb on it. Okay, so if you want to, you can click on these buttons here and it will increment the plugin settings so it allows you to audition them without having to go to this menu repeatedly. So I can listen to that and then... Maybe I'll just exaggerate this so it's more apparent. Let me just switch this into automation off mode so I'm not fighting against any pre-existing uh, send automation. Okay, so that's a handy way of quickly auditioning them, but maybe you're even lazier than that and you just want the plugin to automatically cycle through presets so you can actually listen to them. So I've made a little two second timeline selection here. If I start this playing, then I go to this menu here, which is called plugin settings select, click on this, increment setting every, let's change this to two seconds and then click on this little checkbox. And you can hear cycles through those settings and then let's say I wanted that one I could stop it and then just recall that setting maybe take this increment off recall it click done and then we've got that setting recalled so that's a quick overview of plugin settings in Pro Tools it's worth mentioning that some third-party manufacturers such as Waves do have their own system for saving and recalling plugin settings but this is the general one which is built into Pro Tools I hope you found this video useful Thanks for watching.